Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 8th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. WikiLeaks today released a substantial collection of documents that apparently were stolen from the CIA. The documents are in line with what should be expected from a sophisticated offensive cyber operation. A number of interesting details emerged. For example, a large part of the leaked data deals with mobile devices, in particular exploits for various versions of iOS are discussed. Many of the files also deal with persistence on OS X systems, for example, by injecting code into the EFI firmware that you typically find on modern Apple computers. Exploits for Samsung TVs also caught the attention of many commenting on the files from a defensive point of view. The data dump includes some operating procedures on how to develop and deploy these tools while evading detection. So these guides provide some insight into how more sophisticated attackers deploy tools and they may give you some hints in how to detect them and what to look for. The documents also outline how to make it more difficult to attribute tools to this particular group. This leak yet again demonstrates the risk of cyber warfare in that weapons once leaked can be used by anybody but it should be noted that at this point at least the documents they include code snippets and such but the actual exploit code tools are not included yet and as part of the press release wikileaks stated that they may release them at a later point they're still sort of vetting uh, those tools and looking for ways to actually publish them without having people infect themselves accidentally with these tools. And talking about more sophisticated attacks, Kaspersky released a report showing what they believe is a successor of the infamous Shamu malware. Shamu made the news back in 2012 when it was used to attack the Saudi Arabian oil company Saudi Aramco. One of the notable features of the malware was that it wiped the hard drive of infected systems. Kaspersky observed a number of waves of these Shamu attacks over the last few years against various oil and gas companies and more recently they identified what they're calling Shamu 2.0 or then Stone Trail 1.0. The big difference here is that it's no longer relying on drivers, for example, to inject its malicious code. Instead, it injects itself directly into a running web browser in an explorer process and is so far more difficult to detect. Also, in addition to just deleting the hard drive, this version also includes a ransomware component that essentially encrypts files. Now, unlike normal ransomware, there doesn't appear to be some kind of ransom demand. At least I don't see that in Kaspersky's write-up. And Kaspersky also talks about a third variant that they're calling Newsbeef, which is substantially different but shares a lot of code and, for example, naming schemes for command and control servers. And then we got yet another update for WordPress. This one isn't as super critical as the last one, the 4721. Remember, this was the one that fixed a REST API vulnerability that has since been heavily exploited. However, this new version, WordPress 473, fixes a number of cross-site scripting and cross-site request forging vulnerabilities, where in particular one the YouTube embed cross-site scripting vulnerability could easily be exploited if you're still vulnerable to the old REST API vulnerability. Apparently only about half of WordPress installs have updated to 472 in part maybe because back then the existence of this vulnerability wasn't really noted in any of the updates. 
Software Guard Extension or short SGX is a technology that has been implemented in the most recent generation of Intel CPUs, also known as Skylake. The purpose of SGX is to better separate processes from each other, in particular in virtualized environments where you may have multiple virtual machines running on a single CPU and you need to make sure that there's no crosstalk between those different CPUs. Well, uh, researchers in Austria now demonstrated how it's still actually possible to figure out substantial data about about other instances running on the same CPU using, well, what else? Side channel attacks, looking at timing differences. In this particular case, they were able to recover a complete RSA private key in less than five minutes. In order to realize this proof of concept, the RSA signing application and the key were run inside one of those SGX protected enclaves and the attacker's unprivileged program was running on the same host. Now, typically the attacker shouldn't have access to anything running in that SGX enclave, but by looking at memory and cache timing, they were then able to recover the key. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.